Welcome everyone, welcome. This is the encourager from the encouraging vessel coming to you again today with another word. Uh, so the, the Holy Spirit has put on my heart to speak with you today again. And I feel really heavy in my heart. Um, So I believe these are warnings, these are reminders, and they are urgent. And as I was sitting, I was asking the Lord, Jesus Christ, do you have a scripture today? And uh, the scripture that he's given to me is Matthew chapter 24. And if you've read... Matthew chapter 24, you know, it, it starts out by um, speaking about signs of the end. And I know this is <laughs> not a topic a lot of people do not want to talk about. Many have their heads in the sand. Many are just wanting to carry on and um, while there's nothing wrong with living your life to the fullest and carrying on um, the Lord Jesus Christ instructs and advises and uh, reminds us to be sober so it is wise to know, to think, and to talk about the end. Because this world, ladies and gentlemen, whether you receive it or not, whether you have read the Bible and or just starting to read the Bible, know that this present world must come to a close because the way things are, this was not the intent for mankind. And as I've always said on this channel, the Bible is your instruction manual. And so I'm simply here to talk with you today i know many times you go to church and you get the pastor let's say scream at you that is not the approach the father has me taken and um, that is not the approach i'm wanting to take <laughs> this channel is to inform you, to educate you, to enlighten you, and to encourage you in the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether you believe, receive, know that, know this fact, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he is the Redeemer. There is no other name given among men. And now the Bible does say many will come in his name. And there are many. And the Lord Jesus Christ also reminds us that the sheep knows the voice of the shepherd. Now, if you look in the agricultural world, let's, let's um, take a look at the sheep. Mama sheep, baby sheep. And the flocks of sheep are out there. I'm not the flocks of sheep, they're out there. 
and the lambs are there and everyone's they're grazing and they all look the same generally we see white sheep they're the odd colored ones but generally they're white and they're out there frolicking and they're grazing and the lambs they're doing their thing and of course they wander away from the mother sheep and it, what amazes me is that when the mother sheep calls the lamb you and I will look at the lambs and they all look the same and all the mothers are bleating at the same time calling their babies and it is amazing how the right lamb ends up with the right mother. So when the Lord Jesus Christ says, the sheep knows the voice of the shepherd. So there will be many Jesus Christ out there. As the Bible said, there is. But there's only one that is true. And the sheep do know the voice. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And many are failing to confess that Jesus Christ is king out of fear of likes on their channels now for me specifically for me i understand i know i believe and i receive that jesus christ is my source so youtube here or facebook which i barely use facebook it is a tool it is a tool to reach the masses of course um, satan is using this tool also but the father is wise so many of us are using this tool to reach you ladies and gentlemen And here I am today, bringing to you a word from the heart of the Father, Matthew chapter 24, speaks of the signs of the end. And if you've never thought about the end of things before, I would hope that within the last two and a half years, your focus have shifted and you're taking stock. So I'm going to read on and off in chapter 24 while I converse with you, starting with verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, Do you see all these things? And I'm reading it for your understanding, ladies and gentlemen. I say unto you, not one of these stones will be left up on each other that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us what these things be and what shall be the sign of your coming and of the, com and of the end of the world. So the disciples, they knew that Jesus was leaving they knew because it, because they here's a question 
we were in verse 3. Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? Now, this is old English, of your coming and of the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed, or in plain English, pay attention, be aware that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you're not troubled. Do not worry, for all these things must come to pass. Must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Because nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. There shall be. So Jesus is speaking. And it's very important when you read, ladies and gentlemen, to pay attention to the tense of the word, to pay attention to the phrases. Because that's key to tell you. Now Jesus says, when you see all these things, all these are the beginning of sorrows. And then shall they, and I, and I highlight the word they here, and then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. No one wants to hear these things, that someone, that you're going to be killed. And you shall be hated. No one wants to hear that either. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, because all these crazy things is on the rise and it will be for a while, the love of many shall wax cold. So people are just going to hate each other. But he as in you and me, ladies and gentlemen. That shall endure unto the end. The same shall be saved. So stay focused, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what comes. And now here in verse 4, right after where it says, But the end but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Verse 14 goes, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, briefly I spoke about social media as in Pardon me, YouTube here that I'm using. So the gospel, verse 14 says here, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. So though Satan may <laughs> come with a tool, as in the world wide web the father in his wisdom uses this tool to spread the gospel and ladies and gentlemen who's going to spread the gospel You're right, yes, it's you and me. 
it's you telling your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your neighbors, encouraging them. It's you studying the word and having a channel and going through the Bible and speaking and teaching and encouraging the gospel, the word, in the word, the true word, Jesus Christ. Many are sitting and waiting for, let's say, the so-called church, the pastors to do this. And there are many churches. And they're not all for Jesus Christ. Perhaps you'd never have anyone say this to you. But they're not all. And again, there are many that do not understand the word. But they are there. Supposedly. Amassing a group and speaking. But the father will deal with them. You and I have a job, ladies and gentlemen. And that is to spread the gospel, the truth. You and I have a job. And perhaps you're thinking that you are inadequate. Perhaps you are just on the sideline, just saying, well, I'm just going to pray to the Lord and... Um, read my Bible and just sit in my little corner and wait for the appearing. My mind goes back as the spirit of truth just reminds me of the scripture of one of the parables that Jesus taught on was when there was a master that had servants and he was going away on a journey or a trip or a vacation. And when he was leaving, he called all his servants and um, he entrusted stuff to them. He gave them gifts. So he left. And he returned, and when he returned, all but one invested what he left with them. And I'm bringing up this particular parable to you to help you to see that the Father has given you gifts. And you are adequate. So what are you doing with the gifts that the Father has given you? Are you studying the word? Are you... Are you studying the word to teach someone, to encourage someone? Are you encouraging someone? Because ladies and gentlemen, whether you choose to put your head in the sand or not, The end is coming. And we all must give an account for what the Father has entrusted in our hands. Are we allowing the will of the Father to be manifested 
into our lives? Are you allowing the Father to use you? Are you allowing yourself to be a vessel? I trust these words reach you and they're able to provoke your thinking. And that you will make some changes, some radical changes, ladies and gentlemen. I know these warnings and these encouragements were going out. And many, I fear, are turning a blind eye. But I take you back to the master when he left. And he left um, talents with each of his servant. They didn't know when he was returning home. So you see, they were prepared with the exception of one. So you may look outside from wherever you are listening to this video and it looks like a normal day to you. As I'm looking outside and Skies fluffy and white and everything's a bit still. A few birds zipping about. Although we see the signs of when the Father returns, when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, you and I cannot pinpoint the exact moment. So it behoves us to be ready always. There are many things you need to do. And the first step is to repent. To repent, ladies and gentlemen. And perhaps you're wondering what to repent for. Understand this, you are in a sinful world. And I need not say this to you. You're in a sinful world. I would suspect that by now. that would be more than evident to you. And even as I was trying to mentally prepare to do this video, it was a bit of a struggle. And the reason for that is sin. Because as much as I hear from the Lord Jesus Christ, the enemy, gets in one ear and he speaks also he speaks but I recall the father says in Genesis sin is at your door sin is at your door and it's and for now that it is there but you should not allow it to have control over you, ladies and gentlemen. And so while mentally preparing to do this video, there was a tug with the enemy in my ears. And I had to occupy my time with hymns and psalms, spiritual songs. I had to sit down and talk to the Father. In the natural, we would say, why bother? But again, I remind you that the Father has given us talents. 
you cannot allow situations or circumstances to dictate what you do with those talents. For how will you answer when the master returns? What will you say? Are you hoping that he will wink as in turn a blind eye and said, oh, oh, it's okay, dear, you didn't know. When you did not even take a step and allow him to instruct you, to teach you, to show you. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no do-over. And this video is going a little bit longer than my natural self intended it to. But I do believe that these words need to be said. And there is a reason, though perhaps readily, I may not understand the full reason why I'm coming, why the spirit of truth is encouraging me to come to you with these messages in the last couple of days. The time is near, ladies and gentlemen. And though you may look at that statement and you may scoff at it and say, well, how do you know? I encourage you to get into your prayer closet. I encourage you to read your Bible. And then you will know. It could be, and it will be, on a very normal day when you least expect it because the word illustrates, the word tells us it will be a normal day. But I believe everyone is calculating the events that are happening and are not preparing. There will be those that are calculating that will be left. Ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you seek wisdom from the all true wise God. He, it is him that gives wisdom and he encourages you to seek the things that you need to enable yourself because he's not a puppeteer. He gives us the tools. He gives us the instructions. The time is at hand, ladies and gentlemen. You do not know when your time expires. And yes, you are hearing messages about what is coming and what is to happen. And yes, they are true. But you are calculating those events and are not preparing. So perhaps you're waiting to see World War I yes ladies and gentlemen so I'm still in Matthew chapter 24 I'm in verse 15 now 15 sorry and it reads and this part this portion speaks about the coming of the Son of Man. The Son of Man is Jesus Christ. 
that's his name and many have come in his name and many are abusing his name but his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth that is the name we know in this in the language in the tongue we speak so verse 15 onwards for a few verses speaks of the coming of the of the son of man Jesus Christ and it reads when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. And you'd have to go back to Daniel to read to get that part. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be the great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Look, here is Christ, or there, look, do not believe it. For there shall arise false Christs, and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect behold i have told you wherefore if they shall say unto you behold or look he is in the desert do not go there or look he is in the secret place do not believe them for as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. And immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. In the skies, ladies and gentlemen, that's the heaven we're looking at, the skies. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four, four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth the leaves, you know that summer is near. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Surely I say unto you, this generation and ladies and gentlemen in case you're wondering it is this generation this generation this generation ladies and gentlemen shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled heaven and earth shall pass away 
But my words, says the Lord Jesus Christ, shall not pass away. Signs of the end. To many, it will probably look like there's no end in sight. But be sober, ladies and gentlemen. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, the word of the Lord Jesus Christ is sure. The word of the Lord Jesus Christ is sure. Now, I encourage you to be sober. I encourage you to follow the commandments. It is important. It is very important. And I know many that are listening to messages and teachings, they just want to hear a five second, two second word. But I don't believe that the word of the Lord Jesus Christ will return to him void. And as he instructs, so I speak. The time is at hand, ladies and gentlemen. And you've heard it before. And Perhaps you're even wary of hearing it. However, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is faithful and he is patient and he instructs, he reminds, he teaches, and you nor I will have an excuse. We are inexcusable because we have time. To make ourselves right with the Father. As long as you have breath, you have time. So, the Father will continue to remind until time expires. And when time expires, then that's it. Time's up. But for now, the messages are out there. You have the Bible. You are alive and well. You are hearing the word. And it's up to you if you take heed or not. And it's amazing how the Lord Jesus Christ reminds and encourages and gives everyone an opportunity and opportunities. However, let's continue reading. I'm going to finish the chapter. For whomsoever will that wants to hear. We're in verse 36, still in Matthew chapter 24. And this portion talks about God knows the day and the hour. Only God knows when the Son of Man returns. And if you're calculating, only God knows. I know there are many <laughs> that comes up with a date. But only God knows the day and the hour. Verse 36 reads, But of the day and hour knows no man, no, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So another sign, ladies and gentlemen. You've read the historic event of Noah. You saw how many years it took Noah to build the ark. And then after the ark was built, you saw how long it took for his family to get on. And you saw the events that were happening. The Lord Jesus Christ is giving us clues. 
But if you're not reading, you're not going to clue in on the clues. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, and the Lord Jesus Christ is clear, he speaks and then he explains. So here he is saying, for as in the days that were before the flood, this is Noah's time, they were eating and drinking. When you're eating and, and drinking, it is just a normal day, okay? They were marrying and given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. So things were just carrying on. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So the words of the Most High is going out right now. And many are not paying attention. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Now, if you go back up quite a few verses, you'll see where the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, sent his angels to collect the elect from the four corners. This is it. Two in the field, one taken, one left. Two women grinding, one taken, one left. Verse 42 goes, Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord does come home. You do not know what hour the Lord Jesus Christ is coming. So you should always be ready, ladies and gentlemen. But know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch or what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as you are not thinking. The Son of Man, Jesus Christ is his name, comes. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord has made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes, shall find him doing so. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delays his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he is not looking for him and in an hour when he is not aware of it. And he shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is the end of Matthew chapter 24 so ladies and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen this is a warning this is a reminder you need to be ready I will leave it here for now. Be blessed. This is the encourager.